Hello and welcome to another one of my tutorials. This is a tutorial of how I color line art in Adobe Illustrator. As you can see, I already have the finished black line art and um, I put that on a separate layer and I have already filled it in with solid white. So you can see here that there is um, a white background and a white stroke. I've placed that on a layer below the black lines. Here the black lines are turned off. And as you can see, these are all solid objects I could select, as are the black lines. They're already outlined and flattened. This gives me the advantage that I can start laying color underneath the black lines without covering up the black lines, which um, I find very convenient. And of course, it makes for a very clean illustration. Uh, in this particular case, I'm now going to start selecting the white surfaces and I'm going to start assigning other colors. I can use the uh, swatches that I already have or the color wheel, the color chooser, and um, of course many of the other swatch presets that are inside Illustrator, the color books, um, there's uh, already a selection of skin tones available and you can make your own and download many others so it's very convenient. I'm working in CMYK here because this is going to be printed so the actual color that I'm seeing on the screen is not necessarily the one that I'm going to see when it gets printed. Now since I've been doing this for a long time I kind of know what the colors look like when they will be printed so that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, I do have, of course, Pantone books available where I can see what they look like coded and uncoded. So when I want to achieve an exact color, I will choose that in the Pantone book and then assign that same Pantone color in Illustrator. Here I'm now uh, selecting some of the white areas and giving it the Santa red. Now here I can see that actually this red is not bright enough. I'm going to change that later. But just to keep moving here, I'm going to keep coloring. Um, now here I've noticed that uh, his head and the beard and everything are all one big piece. So I'm going to color those uh, separately a bit later. Now I've chosen the hands and I'm giving a little uh, glove tone and a skin tone for the arms. Um, yellow in the soles of the boots. I think a green t-shirt will look nice for Santa. A sort of pinkish tone for the tongue. And I'm basically just going along and filling in flat surfaces. Here you can see what they would look like in front of a colored yellow background. I sometimes underlay other colors just to see what it would look like in print and also to see if there are any mistakes or any overlapping areas. Okay, so this is pretty much what I could achieve with the flats that I had, the whites. Now I'm going to go in with the pen tool and lay in some other colors. For example, his face. Um, I'm working around the areas uh, that will remain a different color. As you can see, I went over the glasses because actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the white inside the glasses on the lower level, the lower layer, and I'm going to move it above the skin color, cover up the colors that I just laid down. Moving layers to the back and moving them forward makes them cover each other up. And uh, you can also just move them, move the layers in your layers palette or using the move backward, move forward, move to the front, move to the back commands. Um, in your mind, you need to keep track a little bit of where things are. And of course, uh, things that are on a layer will only move 
to the very back of that same layer. So if you have something on a layer underneath it, you will either have to move that object to the other layer or figure something else out. Now I'm starting to lay down some shading on a new layer, which is above the flat color layer. Um, basically a darker hue of the glove tone. I'm going to put in um, a darker red tone to put some shading on Santa. And I always like to put in the dark shading first and then at the very end I put in the highlights, lighting effects. Um, for the purpose of this video I'm doing this relatively quickly and uh, I don't know if the shading and lighting will be exactly correct uh, as it should be uh, based on the light source. Um, this is just to give a little bit of a festive mood to the illustration. And, uh, you know, it is a cartoon and it's supposed to be fun. So this is not uh, a tutorial on correct lighting and shading. It's a tutorial on how to create these things quickly and in a fun way. Here I'm putting a slightly darker skin tone in for shading. Because Santa has a big pink nose and rosy cheeks, I'm later going to go over those with another even darker pink. Um, but for right now, these are just some uh, general colors that I'm laying down. <clears throat> now, sort of a bluish gray for the uh, fur, the white fur on Santa's jacket. And then I'm going to select an actual gray to put some shading in his beard to contrast the blue. And uh, this video is, of course, slightly accelerated. As a matter of fact, it's accelerated to three times. The total length of this video will be 12 minutes. The total coloring process for this Santa and the cake took, well, 36 minutes. By the way, if you're enjoying this, or if you enjoy my artwork, um, you can visit my website at marsdenillustration.com. And I also have a Facebook page, so if you look for Ian David Marsden and feel like liking me, uh, thank you very much. I will, um, of course, post news for new videos and new projects that I'm working on there, so if you want to follow along. I'm going to try and be um, relatively active in this field because um, I do actually also enjoy getting feedback and answering people's questions. So there too, if you uh, want to ask me something about this video or about how I did this, feel free to write something in the comment below uh, on my YouTube channel and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. As you can see here, I'm putting in, uh, again, uh, darker versions of the individual colors as shading. You could actually put two or three different darker shades on there if you wanted to go really crazy and make it look very realistic. Of course, you could even put in gradients uh, on something like these Christmas balls. That would look really nice. Um, it also depends what you're trying to highlight and what you're trying to emphasize. In this case, the cake um, is not the main object. So, And also, I want everything to look like it was done in the same style, so I didn't opt for gradients or anything like that. Now, I chose a bright yellow, and I'm doing the opposite. I am drawing in highlights. This would give a nice sort of festive lighting. Um, Christmassy, if you had a fireplace in the background or a lit Christmas tree uh, that was giving off a nice warm light, uh, this would um, explain why there is such a lighting here. Of course, in this illustration, there is no light source. But then again, this is vector art and could be dropped into anything. As a matter of fact, it could even be dropped over a photograph of a fireplace. Um, you know, anything is possible. Uh, 
or it could be in front of a nice uh, chalet style uh, hut in the snow with uh, light pouring out of the windows for example uh, this is just to give you a general idea as you can see on the right how I'm layering these things sometimes I would actually put the highlights on a different layer altogether um, in complicated work you end up with many many layers uh, that's when you also want to make sure that you really name them uh, in a way that at least you understand if you're not going to share the files with anybody or in a way that everybody will understand if you will be sharing the files with other designers and illustrators and artists here I'm now putting a bit of light into his beard the nice thing in Illustrator 2 is, for example, you can select all objects that have the same fill color. So if at any point I don't like this yellow, I just select all of it and change it. And because it's vector art, of course, it's completely scalable. You can print it small, big, output it to the web. And this could also easily be imported into Flash or other animation software. So uh, it's just a very, I find, clean and uh, fun way to work. I hope you uh, enjoyed some of the things you saw and maybe picked up uh, an idea or a trick or two. And uh, thank you very much for watching, as always. And, uh, well, there you have it. Our little Christmas Santa Claus with his cake. Thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you again soon on my YouTube channel, on my Facebook, or in any of my other social media. This was Ian David Marsden from www.marsdenillustration.com. Thanks again for watching.